and second it. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Moving forward to confirmed appointments. Evie Shermer, Penridge Community Center. Is Evie here? Not here. Not here. Okay. okay. We will table her. She will have to reconfirm for the next month's meeting, right? Correct. Okay. Can next. Speak up, please? Can you speak up when you talk, please? I don't think these are on. You can't, can't hear? No, can't hear at all. How about now? No better. That's because of Frank? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Okay. You can hear. Can you hear, Bob? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Vera Cole, Conservation Committee. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Uh, where's the best place to stand for the mic? Over here? Yep, right okay. there. Okay. Um, I would, I'd like to request that this be read into the minutes, please. My name is Vera Cole and I live at 2045 Upper Rocky Dale Road. I am presenting this comment tonight on behalf of the West Rock Hill Conservation Committee, the members of which are David Collingwood, Karina Ryling, uh, Michael Schreimeyer, Elizabeth Branson, and myself, Vera Cole. The West Rock Hill Conservation Committee was founded in 1997 to monitor land conservation opportunities and initiate conservation efforts to preserve properties in the township. West Rock Hill Township is currently considering a request to rezone a 12-acre parcel of land from residential conservation to extraction. According to our township zoning ordinance, the purpose of residential conservation is to, quote, promote low-intensity rural development and resource protection areas, and to preserve areas of unique natural value and beauty. The purpose of extraction, extraction zoning is, quote, extractive operations that deplete and consume land areas. As the West Rock Hill Conservation, Township Conservation Committee, we feel duty-bound to express our unanimous opposition to this zoning change. In doing so, we wish to make the following points. Number one, the residents of West Rock Hill Township have twice voted to approve tax increases for the preservation of open space. For the township to barter away natural resources that are already protected by residential conservation zoning would be a deep betrayal of the residents' express priorities and commitment to the preservation of natural resources. Number two, if the township were to approve this zoning change in exchange for concessions, as has been suggested, or in, turn, or in return for favors to the township, this would appear to be a clear violation of the Pennsylvania State Constitution Environmental Rights Amendment. And that amendment says, the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and to the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. As trustee of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all the people. In a 2017 decision, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court states that the Commonwealth, quote, may not approach our public natural resources as a proprietor, and instead must, all, must at all times fulfill its role as a trustee. Under the Pennsylvania State Constitution, this township is obligated to act as a trustee of these resources, not a proprietor of them. Special treatment or trading natural resource protection for concessions or favors would expose the township to court, court challenge and legal costs on many, on many possible fronts. Number three, we draw your attention to several points made by the Bucks County Planning Commission in its review of the zoning request provided in writing to the township on April 5th. The Bucks County Planning Commission finds that this zoning change request is not consistent with the comprehensive plan. This parcel is in a resource protection area. These lands require special protection because they contain critical natural resources. The commission says, quote, it should be noted that allowing the proposed expansion would place quarry of operations closer to a tributary into Ridge Valley Creek designated as high quality waters by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. B, the Bucks County Planning Commission warns that if approved, quarry operations would expand in the very areas where underground water supplies are most limited in the township describing waters in these geological formations as limited and, quote, very limited. The commission notes that private on-lot wells serve as the primary source of drinking water for almost 80% of our township's population. 
And C, the Bucks County Planning Commission writes that the applicant, quote, appears to have addressed these groundwater concerns to some extent by adjusting well protection areas required as part of the 1992 agreement, end quote. And then notes that West Rock Hill Township itself provides an additional 500 feet of well protection around the site. In other words, this agreement holds the township and its taxpayers responsible for well damage caused by quarry operations. Furthermore, the Bucks County Planning Commission questions the agreement's well protection coverage for expanded quarry operations and recommends consideration of a new agreement specific to this parcel. All in all, the proposed zoning change raises serious uncertainty about responsibility for well protection and increases the township's exposure to responsibilities and causes for damage, including risk to public health, which the township did not cause. And finally, four, land areas that are, quote, depleted and consumed are lost for generations. The damage to natural resources and the risk to public health are not readily reversible or corrected, no matter what agreements or written obligations may be in place. The location of the quarry expansion is perilously close to precious wetlands and Ridge Valley Creek tributaries. Currently in remarkably good condition, putting these critical natural resources in harm's way would be an unacceptable and unnecessary risk to community health and well-being. We thank you for your consideration of these factors and urge you to act in the best interest of the township's residents, taxpayers, and future generations and say no to the Naysville Materials application for a zoning change. Thank you. Okay, we will accept that into the township minutes. Thank you, Mrs. Cole. I should rephrase that. I'm not sure. Vera. Thank you. Uh, next on the confirmed appointment is Bob Rambo. Thank you. As you know, I was here last month mm -hmm. addressing what I consider, many consider transparencies or lack thereof of transparencies in the way this township is governed. And I've got a little bit of heated debate. Can you um, speak louder? I was here last month. We need, sorry. A, we need a new system. I'm sorry. Go behind the table. The button. microphone is right up there. Pick your voice up here. Can you hear me now? No. Okay. I was, I'll try to repeat this. I was here last month talking about the lack of transparency that I and other people feel goes on in this township. Specifically, I was dealing with the issue of the Holiday House parking lot. But H and K paid at no expense to this township. The number that was thrown out and batted around was $73,000. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a company to give as a corporate gift when they have an application in to change the zoning in this township. It doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't smell right. So, we had our discussion about it. People have their view about it, I have my view about it, and others have their view. After the meeting that we had, I asked for freedom of information, and I got it. It took about 30 days to get something from back from the township. It was very detailed, and I thank you. Mary, I'm not sure if it comes from your office or it comes from the township. Greg consulted me, but it came from the township. It comes from the township. Okay. Well, it was... It was interesting. Um, I got the majority of what I asked for, but I got a surprise in the package, and I thank you for that. In one hand, the other hand, I don't. I get a package from H and K. It's now public information, a formal corporate giving documentation packet. It goes on. It talks about local donations and so forth. Well, something else popped up. We not only have the Holiday House. At the quarry donated. We now have trails in the James Memorial Park that were repaved and never discussed in this township. They are not on our books. What happened? To, can, can you enlighten us as to why and how we're getting all these donations from H&K Quarry in the past year, year and a half? When did this happen? When was the, the parking lot paid to? There's no dates in their, in their formal declaration. There's no amounts of money. I know from watching a video that Sue did a, a joint wreck, the $73,000 is now a real $52,000, which is still a lot of money. It's an awful lot of money. And that information came from where? 
that information came from Sellersville because Sellersville went back to H and K, unbeknownst to me. They went back anyhow and got got a an in kind amount of money that they could put on the books, and it came back to fifty two thousand dollars. And it is on the books that we're partially responsible for the Holiday House. Right. Okay, now. Well, well. No, we're not. We are I, not. I, I, it's a, it's a, I understand it's a joint venture, but we're socially involved with the, the Holiday House. As far as tax dollars go to the it's house. Not, yes, tax dollars go to the house, but just so we understand, joint venture is a private um, business term. What it is, it's a municipal authority that was formed by both West Rock Hill and Sellersville a long time ago. But once established, a municipal authority is a separate legal entity that's or is not required or um, it's not necessary for them to take direction from either township. They're completely independent. Let's jump to the James Memorial Park and the paving that was done in the Memorial Park. Do we know when that was done? HK didn't put it in their documentation. Do we know when it was done? Two years ago? August. August 2016. August 2016, four months before they filed an application to change the zoning. Just at 100 feet, wasn't it? It was, it was um, yeah. just a small parcel around the corner through the woods where our guys couldn't finish because okay. they ran out of time. They did it and they donated it. Then they filed an application to change the zoning. This whole thing is it's chaining. It's not, it's not looking good. Do we understand that, that it's not looking good? Did anybody approve that? Did any the board of supervisors approve that paving? The manager doesn't. He can he can approve anything up to ten thousand um, dollars in, in when uh, when something's done. Are you, and you're saying it's under ten thousand? dollars Yeah, that was like thirty five hundred dollars when our estimate was at the time, something like that. Approximately. Is it on the books? Is it? As a donation? No. As a service? Do you think it should be? Do you need to ask your accountant? <laughs> I think you do. We we will talk to our lawyer. So because it was thirty-five hundred bucks, not over ten thousand dollars, the board of supervisors did not have to do this. You know, if if this township, we, if we look at the Holiday House and we look at what H and K is doing, if this board would have raised our taxes, and nobody likes raised taxes, one mil for one year, it would have generated seventy-six thousand dollars. And I got those numbers from our tax collector. We won't have this issue that we're having here today of transparency. Oh, I think we would. I think you would have found something else you wanted to hang your hat on. Sorry. Oh, you want to get personal. Well, you get I'm personal. I'm not going to not get personal with you Jim, last Jim. week. Yes, you, let, it, let him make his comment. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jim, that's the pro No, I'm not getting get in the gutter with you. No. <clears throat> The transparency issue between what's going on in this paving, I don't know how this board can vote. You should recuse yourself from voting on this application and let the process take over. It looks flawed. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt your public comment, but the Board of Supervisors doesn't have the ability to delegate zoning ordinance adoption to anyone other than the Board of Supervisors. That's what the law provides, it's what they're elected for. There's no mechanism in the law that would allow that. Well, the last thing I want to say is that I really hope that somehow you come up with a way to clear this up so we can have a transparent government. I was saying to somebody the other day, I would like to go home from one of these meetings happy sometime and not aggravate it. I don't want to aggravate you. I don't want to be aggravated. I like to live in a nice, quiet township where things run smoothly. And I hope in the future we can do things more transparency, whether it's $3,500 or $10,000. I do understand corporate giving, and I appreciate corporate giving, but not to this extent and not in the way that it was handled. We need to find another way to get this matter solved correctly and not allow this rezoning. Thank you. Okay, moving forward. Anthony Bogner, next. Hello, boys. 
Hello. Uh, I want to speak about uh, H and K and their uh, rezoning application. There's a mic in the middle too. It's up to you which one you're more comfortable. This one's good. How about this? Everybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, in regards to the H and K rezoning, and I want to specifically talk about the water issue. And um, you know, it's never been the township's job to inform the residents. It's always been, you know, the residents' job to inform themselves. And um, and that's why I'm here tonight because I want to talk about the situation that I've had in the past with water and another quarry. Um, you know, H and K has a plan for handling the repercussions of the project with dry wells and adding arsenic removal systems. Um, but I don't understand how that's acceptable of a proposal, knowing that that could happen. I don't understand that. And um, you know, H and K, they've Scott said that he'll maintenance a new well and the system for two years. But I don't understand, as a homeowner, why a homeowner has to be burdened with that. The maintenance of it, what have you. I mean, it's another cost that, you know, they're benefiting and then you get stuck with a new well that you're stuck with the maintenance of it. Um, you know, DEP has failed in, in many areas in regards to m, &M. Okay, we. You know, and I'm not getting off on that. They have plenty of violations down there, and you know that. And DEP um, <clears throat> is a mismanaged group of people, and it's there's a lack of manpower. We all know that. And um, the thing is, is that um, you know, I, I I would ask the board to um, to uphold their oath and serve the people. Um, as the elected positions. And um, you cannot put a money value on somebody's health. And the thing is, is that people don't understand that clean water is not a replenishable resource. It's not. You, you can't, I mean, you, Jay, you work in wastewater and clean water, you know that. And I've worked there too, I, kn I know what the deal is. And you, I, I just, I, I want you to consider that aspect of it, and you know, uh, and my a friend of mine, Mark Lichty, has a well problem too, and um, you know, and if I, if he can speak about it too, I, I'd like for you to hear that. I think it's important that you know that there's a water problem. So, Mark, can you? Thank you. I was actually asked to speak for a moment on the Environmental Rights Amendment tonight. But uh, as I was coming down here, I was thinking about my father, who used to be on the Zoning Hearing Board here, and also uh, uh, Jeff Markley, who was a good friend. Uh, he, uh, he was my sister's first boyfriend when she was 16 years old. So, and and these, are, these are good people. These were good people. People that we all, all value, people that have made a tremendous contribution to this community, and their contribution to the community was about preservation of West Rock Hill, as we know it today. It wasn't about preservation of mining. That's not what Jeff was about. That wasn't what my father was about. It was preservation of the heritage of what we see going on at my farm up the street. Uh, it's a red brick farm up on Ridge Road. It's now the farm it was back in 1850, the Hirschberg farm. And that's, that's a lot of what the preservation is that we want to do here, and I think you guys would agree with that. The supervisors over the years have done a wonderful job of preserving this community. And I think you all value the job that the supervisors, and Jeff Markley and my father, have all done in preserving the community. And I know that that's, that's your spirit, and, and it's not mining that we want to preserve, but I was asked to speak for just a moment about the Environmental Rights Amendment. And this is, a, this is huge, the Environmental Rights Amendment. In 1971, the uh, Pennsylvania legislature 
amended the Constitution to protect our right to clean air and clean water. And you read it, but let me, because of the importance of this amendment, I, let me just read it again. It, it's, it has, has to do with the discussion that we're having here tonight. In, that, in, in Article 1, Section 27, the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and to the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. <coughs> As trustees of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for all of the benefit of all people. And we're in a commonwealth, and you are the agents of the commonwealth. And so you, as the agents of the commonwealth, are the trustees to protect our right to clean air and uh, clean water. And so, so our request to you is to stand with us to stand beside us, not because I'm, I'm feeling like there's an opposite side thing going on here. It shouldn't, it should be all one. It should be all one. And the Constitution, the Constitution of Pennsylvania calls for it to be all one. And you, you probably too know, and I'm sure you know, uh, about the, uh, the Robinson Township decision, and, and that was in 2013, and that set aside the, the um, legislature's attempt to, to void local zoning so that they could have put a gas well <coughs> 200 feet from here. So in that Robinson Township decision, that upheld the uh, Environmental Rights Amendment. And then again, in 2016, in the Environmental Defense Foundation decision, where the Pennsylvania legislature was taking money from uh, their proceeds from the lease, gas leasing, and they were putting it in the general fund. It was supposed to go right into the environmental funds. And so that too, under the environmental, was found unconstitutional under the Environmental Rights Amendment. It's a powerful amendment. And that's why, this is all changing by the way, only in two, you know, the Environmental Rights Amendment was passed in 1971. It wasn't until the 2013 decision, Robinson Township, that it really began to come unto its own. And so, so all, all these people, all we're doing here is saying, be our trustees. Stand with us. That's all. Just stand, don't, don't be on the opposite side of the fence. I mean, it's, it's, it, we see so much division. We see so much division today. This is not the time for division. This is not a mining community. This is time for unity. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Next on the agenda for confirmed appointment is Vera Cole and Marty Simon. Hi. My name is Vera Cole and I still live at 2045 Upper Rocky Dale. Um, my husband is Marty Simon and we present this as a joint personal statement. Um, when we first heard that the quarry was seeking a zoning change so that it could expand operations, we, we weren't concerned. Uh, residents of the township have voted twice to approve tax increases to protect open space. Our township office educates and encourages clean water protection on a range of fronts, from rain gardens to reduce your use of herbicides and pesticides to best practices for businesses. The township plans carefully for stormwater management. And like many others, we pay tens of thousands of dollars for a sand mound septic system that must now be pumped every three years. The township, it seems, is clearly committed to the responsible management and protection of our water resources. We'd have much to lose and little to gain from changing a parcel from residential conservation to extraction. It wouldn't even be a, clear, a consideration. It, clearly, it was a non-starter. Well, we've learned a lot since then, and that's why we are here tonight. Um, first of all, the more Marty and I learned, the more incredulous the situation seemed. When the quarry bought this property, it was already zoned residential conservation. It even had a deed restriction on it saying that it could not be used for excavation. So from the minute the quarry bought this property, they knew that using it for quarry operations was not allowed. 
Secondly, problems with the existing quarry were far worse than we realized. We hear the blast and our house shakes, but we do not know the extent to which neighbors' wells had already been damaged. And filings with the township. The quarry itself reports 15 contaminated wells in the previous year alone. Even more shocking has been learning about the number of families in our area who haven't been able to drink their own well water for years because of contamination from quarry activities. Like, why on earth would we want more of this? It's been over a year since the quarry filed its application to amend the zoning map and comprehensive plan. What looked to us as a very clear and easy no, obviously is not. So why is that? Several ideas have emerged. One, the quarry will win in the long run, no matter what we do. Better to get as many concessions out of them as we can, no sense fighting. Two, the quarry does the township lots of favors, and keeping those favors coming is good for the township. Three, some of the decision makers have long-standing business and perhaps personal relationships with quarry management. It's a buddy thing. Before addressing these perceptions, Marty and I want you to know that we believe the process is working. We trust that nothing is decided yet and that you are listening. For more than 20 years, we've had our family and business in West Rock Hill Township. We have confidence in the individuals and institutions that serve our community. At this juncture, we are counting on the Board of Supervisors and Planning, Condition, Planning Commission to act on behalf of the best interest of the residents of this township. You've never given us reason to expect anything less. We love it here and we appreciate your work. We believe that any of you have, have personal relationships or business that would prevent you from acting in an unbiased manner and considering only the well-being of the township in this decision, you would honorably recuse yourself or take whatever actions may be legally appropriate. Having said this, we can see that you're in a tough spot. By many accounts, the quarry can be a powerful and intimidating force. In recent months, we've learned about the court battle years ago that led, the quarry, led to the quarry operating in our township in the infamous 1992 agreement. Now the quarry is asking for a zoning change and an amendment to our comprehensive plan. So far, it seems that you and the Planning Commission have done things right, following the rules carefully to be sure the request is giving due process so that there will be no arguments about that after the fact. This is very important, and we thank you for that. Why would a quarry buy a property it could not use except for its supreme confidence in being able to force a zoning change whenever it wanted? In the face of this pressure, we would remind you that the authority, the power, is actually in your hands. You don't have to do this. Saying no to this zoning change is what the residents of the township want, and it is clearly within the township's authority. It is the correct, simple, and least cost way forward. We see no basis for this idea that the, quote, quarry is going to win anyway. The circumstances are very different now than they were this time in 1992. The township has solid planning and zoning in place now. The quarry bought this parcel when knowing it was zoned residential conservation. conservation. This fact is cut and dried. The township has no obligation to change any zoning for anyone. Secondly, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court issued a broad ruling this summer in strong support of the state's environmental rights amendment, saying that the government, including municipalities, is to act as a trustee of natural resources and has a duty to, to prohibit their degradation or depletion. And regarding favors, the quarry does for the township, and we all do favors for the township, right? We all do. It's corporate giving is great. I bet every person in this room has, has given to the township in one way or another. But regarding the quarries, the favor the quarries does for the township, any appearance that this zoning decision is a tit-for-tat arrangement opens a real can of worms in terms of equal protection. If another landowner paved a swimming pool parking lot and then dropped off a proposal to rezone a property from residential conservation to ex uh, extraction, would it be approved? Under the Constitution, all need to be treated similarly. If this zoning change is approved, then the township better be prepared to approve every other zoning change requested on equally poor grounds. And finally, approving this change could look, look a lot like spot zoning, which is unlawful in Pennsylvania. This proposal is not, consi not consistent with the comprehensive plan. It benefits a few landowners while creating negative impacts for surrounding landowners. It affects a small area, and it will provide private rather than public benefit. So our point is this, in today's world, there seems to be little basis for this mindset that the quarry will win anyway. It's just the opposite. We believe that approving this zoning change would put the township in far greater legal jeopardy than simply saying no. We know recent local history and current official filings tell us a quarry expansion will contaminate more residential wells and will lower groundwater levels. It will put wetlands and local waterways at risk. It will expose our residents to untold public health risk and our township to financial liability. We do not want this, and it's entirely avoidable. Approving this zoning change would benefit a very few while harming and endangering many. We're asking you to use the power and authority vested in you to say no. 
We know the quarry can be intimidating. We're here to tell you we've got your back. The Planning Commission will make its determination at some point, but the final decision rests with you. We hope our comments here have been helpful. Thank you for your service to our community, and we appreciate your somber consideration of the decision before you. Thank you. Okay, moving forward to committee reports. Next on the agenda is the Planning Commission. Uh, I don't know if there was a Planning Commission. Was there? Nope. No. So the meeting was canceled. The meeting was canceled. Not okay. Thank you, Chris. Moving forward, next on the uh, agenda here is the Comprehensive Planning Committee report. Mr. Duvall. Okay, the plans uh, move along well. We have had excellent response on the questionnaire. And I think regularly we've got about 800, 900 responses. Approximately, yes. Yeah. And uh, we've been very thorough, and Bucks County is in the process of tabulating all that. At the next meeting, we'll get an understanding of what that is. And as time goes on, we'll expose what the data includes. Uh, the last meeting, we spent a lot of time talking about the population, who they are, where they work, how old they are, how young they are, uh, to get a better feel for what our atmosphere is and what the people are here and what we might expect coming here in the next 10, 15 years, 20 years. Uh, so I think it's moved along well. We have a really good committee, cohesive, debatable, very debatable, and uh, and it's good. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the way it's going. Okay. Any questions? Uh, okay. And, uh, just one comment. As time goes on, we will obviously be considering the issue of presenting the issue relative to the whole issue of the quarry and, and zoning going forward. Okay, um, I'll make a motion to accept the comments made by Mr. Duvall for the Comprehensive Planning Committee. I'll second. Motion's been made and second. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Let's have it. Uh, next on the agenda is Park and Rec, Mr. Strobel. Are you here? Yes, good evening. How are you? Okay. Good. Um, our main, our main uh, talk of was the uh, in September fest, which uh, which was a good uh, good outing for us. Uh, it was a little warm, but we had a lot of people come out. It was pretty much uh, on the same attendance as it has been for the last two years, which is a bit down from the past years. So we had extra food again. Uh, when it comes to monies, again we made about fifteen hundred again, like we did last year. I guess I'm allowed to say that. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> um, the um, one of our discussions too for September Fest would be on the uh, food line. We're looking for some new ideas. It seems like some people didn't like again the the flow of the people and so and so. It's uh, it's a bit warm in the back for the people doing the food and the serving. So maybe we need to. Shift things around. What do you think, Jay? We're going to take a look at it. Yeah. yeah, we have to look at the different flow, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, that was our main discussion. Was on the uh, was on September Fest, and uh, again we talked about the the plan for the park in general, the master plan, and uh, we're almost there with Judy. Uh, we'll be finishing that up. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, survey next meeting which the township uh, issued, and uh, that's going to answer some of our questions, too, on, uh, you know, population, aging, just how many children are coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm getting the impression that a lot of the kids who come to our September Fest are not even from our area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's supposed to be a, a, one of these festivals where it's for the township, but it's from the outside they're coming in because it's a free outing because others don't don't really do that as a free outing. 
So if you have any ideas, come to uh, Park and Rec and you know feed us ideas on on the on the on the, uh, on the food, on the flow, any ideas. It's about what I have. Uh, yeah, Judy, picture. I want everyone to take a look. This is the Compassionate Friends Garden that we were talking about two years ago, okay. and it's really come a long way. Uh, I'm really proud of what this group's done. And Bob, with your help, they've really, really gone forward. So there's a lot of new flowers coming in over the next couple of weeks for uh, some, a lot of evergreens for winter. Um, they still have their statue that has to come in yet, but uh, everything else is pretty much complete. I see people there every day just enjoying their lunch, bringing in their kids bring their pets sitting around and just looking out over the, the pond. So very nice. Yeah. So thank you, Bob, for all, all the effort. Nice job, Bob. And, and I'll tell you how many people <clears throat> and I go to the park maybe every week or so or more. And I see, you know, moms with their kids. And the uh, kids will go over to the uh, area now where you can sit. And some of the kids even how peaceful it is, you know, it's a it's really a nice spot. I thought so they did a great job. A beautiful job. Beautiful job, Bob. And you know what? It didn't cost anything. It's all one. It's it's but all but donated. But you know, donated by you know people associated with the uh, the garden people, which is a good group. Bob, Judy had a question. I just wondered when the individual. Aren't there going to be individual plots? There are. They'll yes. go around the base, underneath the seating. There will. <laughs> there'll be a couple of weeks. They'll be coming in. There'll be plots with gold yeah. buttering. Now, how about the statue? That's a, the statue was away. held up in customs in San Francisco um, by the FDA, so it must be something to do with oh. spotted lantern fly or something like that. Oh, okay. You know, they, have to, they have to check to make sure there's no bugs or anything in the in the crazy and all that. Yeah. So it should be done in a month or so. But you know, the the uh, all the people walking in the park, it's really become a, a point of uh, yeah, attention. Yeah. Done well. And also, as far as the park goes, we have a, we have a get fit with the dock walk tomorrow night, and then one in two weeks on November second, I think it is. Yeah, it's true. That'll be the last one for the year, right? All right. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Bob. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the Park and Rec Committee and yourself and all of the volunteers that have volunteered um, to put the September Fest uh, on and make it a reality. I think it is, it is something that people don't realize how much time and effort is put into it. Uh, from, our, from our volunteers that cook, to the volunteers that yeah, park true. cars, to the, to the months and months and months of planning ahead of time. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult job to do and pull off every year, and I just want to say thank you to you and the Park and Rec Committee. Right. Okay, and I think we all thank you. Okay, moving forward, uh, first I gotta, I'll entertain a motion for oh, approval. I'll make a motion. The motion's been made for approval of the second rep. Second it by Don. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Nice have it. Okay, moving forward, Con conservation committee. Uh, you have a copy of the July minutes. Uh, there's nothing new to report other than one. <coughs> we need to talk about the executive session. Okay. We don't need to have approval of minutes, correct? Right? Approve the motion approve minutes as presented. There is no the minutes are here. Okay. All right, I'll second. Okay. All those signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. All right. Moving forward. Commission reports, um, police report. Chief Blake, are you here? There you are. How are you? It's good, thanks. I just like to say, just like to say, Bob, oh. the root beer floats were great that day. <laughs> There's a lot of hard people working hard there. I just came to have root beer floats and ride the train with my kids. So, but uh, it's always a good time. This is the uh, police uh, commission report for police activities for September 2017. Um, you'll see it lists for October, but we all, we're always a month behind. So the police department responded to 387 calls for service. Of those calls, 169 were in East Rock Hill and 218 were in West Rock Hill. The department handled 35 traffic crashes, 15 crashes in East Rock Hill, 
20 crashes in West Rock Hill, 17 were reportable crashes, and 18 were non-reportable crashes. When I say reportable and non-reportable, that's just the way they're classified with PennDOT. So a reportable crash would be a crash where a vehicle was towed and or someone was injured. The non-reportable crash doesn't meet that criteria, but there's still an uh, internal report done. Federal Regional Police Department officers responded to six Part 1 crimes and 42 Part 2 crimes in September, totaling 48 crimes. Uh, <coughs> part 1 crimes are also known as the index crimes. And the violent crimes, these crimes include homicide, sexual assault, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, theft, auto theft, and arson. In West Rock Hill Township, the following crimes uh, had occurred, sex offense against a minor, a fraud case, two cases of theft of uh, $200 and over, a retail theft case, two trespass cases, four criminal mischief cases, two harassment and stalking cases, three dog law violations, uh, one DUI, one cruelty to animals case, two cases of disorderly conduct, and one narcotics sale. In East Rock Hill, there was a uh, $200 and over theft, a under $50 theft, two fraud cases, four criminal mischief cases, or narcotics possession, two DUIs, two <coughs> underage drinking, um, three disorderly conducts, two harassment, one unauthorized use of an auto, three dog law violations, and five ordinance uh, violations. Uh, the following charges were filed in September. One bad check, one criminal mischief, one underage drinking, one felony retail theft, uh, one unauthorized use of auto, three DUI cases, um, or arrest, one simple assault, one harassment and stalking, one possession of drug paraphernalia, one possession of methamphetamines, three dog law violations, one public drunkenness, and five disorderly conducts. Also conducted 165 traffic enforcement details, seven of those on Old Bethlehem Pike, and issued 11 verbal traffic warnings, 37 citations, 41 written warnings, and conducted 332 business checks. We had a mix up uh, uh, detail which is our Motor Carrier Enforcement Program. Uh, that was on September 20th. 13 vehicles were inspected. Five were, put out, uh, five were out of service violations. Four of those five were placed out of service. Uh, administratively, we met with Penwich High School staff. And I just want everybody to know that the drug take back is on October 28th. There's two locations in West Rock Hill, uh, one at the police station and one at Grandview Hospital, and that's from 10 to uh, 2. Also, I don't know if the gentleman was here last month. Uh, in my report, there was 21 Part 1 crimes and 23 Part 2 crimes, which that's a, that's a high amount of Part 1 crimes for this community. And he had asked what it was like the year prior. So I went back and pulled that, and I don't see him in here. Um, but a year ago, August of 2016, we had 8 Part 1 crimes and 34 Part 2 crimes, totaling 42 crimes. In August of 2017, we had 21 Part 1 crimes and 23 Part 2 crimes, totally 44 crimes. So we average about 40, 45 crimes. It's just that last month we had a high amount of Part 1 crimes, and that's because of all the, the thefts that we had, um, receiving stolen property, um, those types of cases. So I, I don't know why that occurs. Crime's cyclic in nature sometimes. Um, so, you know, you, you, know, you have ratchet burglaries and not have any burglaries for a long time. That's it. Any questions? Please come to the police department meeting. We meet the fourth Wednesday of every month. Uh, if you guys could all come there, that'd be great. I'll supply coffee. <laughs> Please come. So, uh, we're 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 yeah. yeah, I'm lonely. There. If you have any issues in the township, please stop by the police department. I would like to commend one of your officers. I didn't get his name uh, about a week or so ago. He went down our road. I was out on the road working. He went down the road fairly fast, following a vehicle. Uh, about 45 minutes later, he came back up. He, I was still working outside. He stopped. He pulled over. He says, "I'm sorry. I didn't go down the road fast because I wanted to go fast. I was following that car. I was after them." Oh, okay. And I said, "I sort of figured that." I said, "Thanks for letting me know." I said, "I didn't think you were just driving fast for no reason at all." Oh, but it was nice of him to stop by and just explain himself. I what, what roads that you were on? South Lake. Okay, thank you. We'll get right back. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is that take back? What is that about? Oh, uh, twice a year, uh, uh, through an effort with the DEA and Bucks County uh, District Attorney's Office, they do a uh, drug take back, uh, not only in our department, but departments in Bucks County. 
and you can bring you know any unused uh, prescriptions, um, over-the-counter medicines, and take them to the station. But we also have the kiosk at the station. You can come anytime, um, Monday through Friday, or you know if it's after hours, just pick up the blue phone. We'll also come back and meet you there, and you know uh, you dispose of it there. You know that you really shouldn't be disposing of any unused medicines. You know in, in the water system, that, that's not a good idea. We're just throwing them out in the trash, which will go into the water system. Uh, we're just keeping them around because sometimes they just wind up in, in the wrong hands. So we're in the police station. If some chance, by some chance you can't get to the police station, call an officer, will come and take them and we'll dispose of them. So they offer the, twice a year in October and April, they'll do a big push for a take back. Uh, so we'll collect it all year round. So we've been collecting uh, things in our kiosks, drugs in our kiosks since April. So they'll weigh those as some of you know as our as our uh, uh, take back event, along with the the items that we receive on that date too. So. The county takes them and they uh, incinerate them. So you got to handle the privacy. If it's a prescription drug, you're not using it anymore. You we, put it in a Ziploc bag. You no, you don't. You you can take the label off. They. We just put it in the kiosk. We don't even look at it. It's sealed, and, and then it goes to the county, and it's sealed in the box there. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't think they're opening it. So there's just, just so much of it. Some people worry about that, and they peel the, you know, the, 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 the uh, name and label off. Yeah. But we don't honestly. We just. I mean, it gets filled probably once a week. We have to empty it. So, I mean, you know, we don't look at it. Excuse me, sir. Can I have your name? The first gentleman that made a comment. Oh, Bob Rambo. No, no. Yeah, over here. Well, and what, where do you live? 218,000 acre room. Thank you very much. Good question, ma'am. Yeah, uh, Kathy Gerhardt, 218,000 acre room. Um, I take it you live with them. The guy who is short. We deal yeah. with that speeding room. <laughs> we live right on the corner. As okay. We see. How fast people actually go in that corner. It's crazy. But that's not what my issue was. Since the bridge road has been paved, how many more accidents have you had on that bridge? Um, I don't know. I could try to. I could get those stats. That I don't know off the top of my head. Because I've seen just in my short route, because <coughs> I go from Thousand Acre to Lonely every day. And there are so many vehicle marks in the ditch all over the place. Yeah, I can get those stats. And if you don't want to wait till the next meeting, come to the, you know, just come to the station because they're they're easily attainable. I just know they're going a lot. Yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah. <laughs> but folks, remember these crimes here. Like a lot of these crimes on and, and crimes that are reported and charges filed. I mean. Off the top of my head, I don't know how many of those crimes are from non-residents. I mean, we can track that, but we, we don't. But, I mean, this is a great township, both East and West Rock Hill. So the, the issues that we're dealing with are quality of life issues, which I'd rather police that. I've been here for 29 years. I'd rather police that for 29 years than high volume crime and, and those types of calls. So. When you see all the, when you see crime, crimes like that, I mean, yeah, it is, it is alarming. But remember, a lot of those crimes are committed by transient population coming through. Um, so you do live in a safe neighborhood, and like I said, most of the, most of the issues are we're, we're dealing with a quality of life issue, which you know, that's what we'd rather deal with. So. Okay, any questions for Chief? Other than that, no, I just comment to the. Listen to what Chief says. Don't dump them down the toilet or put them in the garbage. Take them to the police station. And if you can't get there, like I said, I, I was at a restaurant one time and, and uh, I was off duty and a guy recognized me as the police officer. He's like, hey, you saw that drug take back box? I'm like, yeah. And he said, well, uh, I'm, t I'm caring for an elderly lady who just passed away and I have these prescriptions. I'm like, okay, yeah, just drop them off. He goes, I won't be up your way for a while if you take them. I'm like, okay. So you know, I put them in the trunk of my car, and I'm, you know, about a couple days later, I pop my trunk. I'm like, that's right, I got these drugs here. I got to put them in the trunk there. Thankfully, I wasn't pulled over. <laughs> anyway, so.
All right. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the Chase report. So, or do you have a question? No. no. no question. Okay, motion's been made. Second. Second. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Keep up good work. Yes. All right, uh, moving forward. Next on the agenda is uh, the Joint Recreation Commission. Mr. Miller. Okay, the minutes from the last meeting are in the in your packets. Um, just to go over a couple things, we've got some issues, not issues, we've got some <coughs> items uh, in the works for a Jeff, a Jeff Martin Memorial at the pool. Um, we will have our budget, the draft budget will be ready at our meeting for the first Tuesday of November. Uh, I don't anticipate any change in the budget from last year. There's no reason to raise. We're doing pretty good right now. Um, we've caught, we caught, actually caught the rod leap. We caught two people on camera. No, we have security cameras trying to break into the pool on two different occasions. So that's good news. The cameras are working. And um, let's see, financial report. We've got eight thousand four hundred fourteen dollars in our in our fund balance, which is excellent because mm -hmm. that's a, a forty percent increase over last year. Absolutely. And last year was a constant down for the last ten years. We've just been losing money. <coughs> so you and everybody involved did a great job. Yeah, I need to thank our, our volunteers. Many of them are in the audience here tonight. Actually, there's a lot of people that volunteer to come over and, and help us with the benches and help us uh, just paint and scrape and pressure wash and everything else, so thank all you folks that do that, and the people that bring over their heavy equipment and their, Tony, I'm going to keep thanking you for that, Tony. Um, so recently, what have we done? Well, I want to thank Wendy Bradley, who made up these really nice cards, uh, nice picture of the pool, nice picture of uh, uh, everything we do on the back. We've been going around to all the events, September Fest, um, we, we took these to the uh, Fall Festival in Percocy, in Sellersville, every place they're having an event, we, we walk in with these cards and give them out, and we're seeing a big uptick on our website of people that are, are getting interested in the pool. So that's that's really good news. I'm, I'm so happy that we keep, keep making this fund a little bigger, because that's, that's really what we Absolutely. want to become self-sufficient. You, um, you want the pool to be used. Yes, yes. Uh, otherwise, um, Judy, you had a couple pictures that I, I, I like pictures. It just kind of tells you what's going on. We we had put in these, you'll see those six by six posts. We had put those in last year to put in um, shade sails so that we had some more shade area. And they weren't put in properly. So uh, last week I worked with the, uh, the crew from Sellersville and Eddie's Electric who came over and pulled them all. And we reset them at a depth of five feet and filled the entire thing up with concrete. You can see that, oh, you can't see it, but uh, they, they are solid now. You can, they don't move at all. Uh, so we're all set to go there. So Steve, I think that meets all the requirements that you had for getting those things. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. That should be good now. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so today I spent today with three loads of topsoil, three, three cubes of topsoil and a shovel and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Did you have any help? No. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's okay. I got, I got a lot of it down. Uh, I'm going to go back tomorrow, finish it up, and then I'm going to put in seed. And so it'll be all ready for spring. All right. uh, so the other thing was Suzanne, I walked over one day, and Suzanne's under a bench with a can of stain. And uh, all the, the wood was replaced on all 16 of our benches at the beginning of the year, but we wouldn't let them dry out. So Suzanne's been going around restaining all the benches. Uh, she had a, a crew in last week of three people from uh, community service who helped her. And they got all of them done by two, I think. So those will all be done by, by the end of next week. So those are all in good shape. So that's really the activities that are going on at the pool right now. Wendy, am I allowed to say that you're getting ready to start a, uh, a fundraiser? Not a fundraiser, a membership drive. A membership drive? Yeah, and, and you've got some people lined up in the community to help you out. I think that's excellent. Yes, we want to try to do a membership drive. So I kind of talked to a lot of the moms that bring their kids every summer out there. To Get them involved with the five so far. So if you know anyone else in the community or yourself that would want to help, um, give us a call or our website up and uh, give us a hand with that. Thank you. Yep. And I, I know I don't know how many of you have done this, but I mean my my kids took their swimming lessons there, and I know many of others. Bob, I think your kids took swimming lessons there too. They took them together actually. Um, so I just I think it's a good thing, and, and from the from what I saw on the survey, people think that the pool should stay. So we need to we need to work to make it make 
can stay. Okay. So that's that's all I have. Okay. Great, great job, Jim. Um, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the uh, Joint Rec Authority report as presented. I'll second it. I'll second it. All those signify by saying aye. 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 I just have it. Thank you. Oh, right. If anybody wants cards, I have them here. There's also in, the, in our lobby and many other lobbies of municipal buildings in the area. Sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. Moving forward. Next on the agenda is the tax collector's report. Suzanne. I don't Suzanne's think. on vacation. Oh. Okay. Um, before you, you have the tax collector's report. For this month uh, brought in was $2,633.80. It's the slow time of year. We get most of our tax money in the spring and so. Right. Any any questions regarding the tax report? No. None. No. Okay. I'll make a motion. Have a motion made for approval. Second. Second it by Don. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Moving forward. Engineers report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I only have a few minor items on the agenda tonight. Uh, first is the. Pedigari Technologies Land Development Plan on Bethel Pike. If you recall, that was approved a few months ago. They have addressed all their conditions of approval except for signing of the record plans and agreements. Uh, Mary's working on the agreements. We have the record plans here tonight, so I look for a motion to authorize signing the plans after the meeting. Okay. We have a motion made. Second. Second. All those signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Okay, you got that. Uh, do you have our plan review status in the in your agenda books? There's no projects requiring action at tonight's meeting. And then the last item is one uh, construction voucher for the Rock Hill Contractor Services in the amount of fifteen thousand thirty-four dollars and sixteen cents. That's the mini story. That's the mini. Yeah, across the the new one. Move for approval of the lease of the money. Okay, I'll second that. Motion to made. Second. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Let's have it. And that's all I have, unless there's any questions. I don't have any questions for you. Do either of you two have questions for me? Okay. Um, I entertain a motion for approval of the engineer's report as presented. So moved. Motion's been made. Second. Second. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Next on the agenda is the solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only item I have on the solicitor's report this evening is a, an approval resolution for the Holzerman um, lot line change. It's a property on Catch Basin Road. You reviewed the plan at the last meeting. Yes. Uh, directed me to prepare a resolution, which I have done. The applicant has reviewed the resolution and has agreed to the conditions okay. set forth therein. So if you would want to adopt the resolution, you could do so by making a motion to approve resolution 2017-6. I'll make that motion. Okay, that motion's been made. I'll second it. There's some discussion. Yep, go right ahead. I haven't seen anything about uh, P and Lua in this activity. Um, I believe that what you what was in the review letter and what you discussed at the last meeting was that because no new lots were being created, there is no fee and Lua. The fee and Lua road improvements is only when a new lot is being created. Correct. Does that satisfy you, Mr. Duvall? Well, yeah, it always good. Okay. I want to make sure it was discussed. <coughs> it was. There's no understanding. Okay, so I have a motion on the table and second it. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you.